At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. Pahrump Nugget, Progressive Cash Drawings, Mystery Point Multipliers, Mystery Gift Days, Extra Cash for Four of a Kind, Bingo Bowling Football and Food Specials. Looking for constant action? Look no further. Prompt Nugget Hotel and Casino. News 46 is brought to you by Healthcare Partners. News is brought to you in part by One Nevada Credit Union, where right now you could refinance your auto loan with rates as low as 2.98% and no payments for 90 days for qualified members. Call us today for details. News 46 is also brought to you by the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump. When it comes to sensitive matters like bankruptcy, take a breath of fresh air by calling an experienced and compassionate attorney at the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump, 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer. When you need the best dermatology care in Pahrump, call Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer, 775-727-9800. News is also brought to you by the St. Therese Mission, a future venue for cultural and environmental events near Pahrump. Get involved. Visit us at stthereszmission.com or call 702-507-4172. News is also brought to you by Hope Counseling Services, where we specialize in behavioral health, inspiring hope for a brighter tomorrow. Call 775-727-0101 for more information. Tonight on News 46, search and rescue look for a plane. Police make a discovery in the Walmart parking lot. And the winner for Miss Senior Night County is News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Monday, April 23rd, 2012. I'm Zach Fuentes. And I'm Monique Murphy for News 46. Deputies conducted a welfare check on a dog located inside, ve inside a vehicle in the Walmart parking lot and discovered a deceased male. Uh, we were summoned here for a, uh, a call of a dog in a vehicle, and when our deputy arrived, he discovered a deceased male. So we're here conducting a death investigation reference that. Does it look like a suspicious death? We have nothing at this point that indicates that. Uh, however, we're still in the early stages of the investigation, so we're not quite sure what happened. We quartered off the area and brought in hazmat. Yes, we did. Uh, we mainly did that since we're out in the middle of the uh, parking lot. We try to uh, give some uh, respect to the deceased person, and we blocked the view of the passerbys. And Nye County Animal Control took possession of the dog? They did. Make sure he's healthy, and uh, we'll try to find some uh, family members that will be able to take care of the dog. Do you know how long he's been here? We're not releasing that at this point. The mortuary is coming to um, pick up the deceased. Has the family been notified at this point? We haven't made a notification, which is why we're not releasing a whole lot of details at this point. Nye County Sheriff's and Search and Rescue attempted to locate an ultralight aircraft that reportedly crashed Saturday morning. Nye County Sheriff's deputies and Nye County Search and Rescue canvassed the area near Stephanie and Simpkins Street for a report of an ultralight plane that possibly had went down. They searched the north side of Shadow Mountain as well as the California side for the report of the missing ultralight plane. At one point, a deputy had spotted the ultralight flying above near the Albertsons parking lot, but the reporting party had reported hearing it and then not hearing the engine. According to Nye County Sheriff's Captain Bill Beck, based on lack of evidence and no report of a missing pilot or person, we've concluded that the plane was not missing. The reporting party had only reported hearing it and then not hearing it. No one actually saw it go down. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Over 200 law enforcement teams from all over the world participated in the Baker to Vegas relay race. Well, it's a hot one today, and I guess we've lost a couple of runners because it's so hot. But we're all sitting here waiting for them to come through. 
Our first one just came through about two hours late. So I imagine we'll be here till four or five o'clock in the morning. And do you know Perump's runner? Perump's runner for Team 206 will be A. Hill, Deputy A. Hill. And who's the first to come through? Joseph Lona from Kern County. And how long have you guys been out here? Well, we put the trailer up at 10 and we started sitting at 4. And you you said you're going to be out here till 3 a.m., 4 a.m.? Whenever the last runner goes through, yes. And this is an annual thing. How long have you guys been doing this? How many years? It's 28 years old. We've been doing it here. I uh, can't remember exactly. I think it's 25 that it has actually been through our town. And the Moose Lady started it, and I started with that in the last... 13 years I've been in charge of setting up all the stuff here at Saddle West. And do you know last year's winner? Uh, it was either the Chippies or LAPD. I'm really sorry. No worries. Um, we have many racers. We have many runners. Um, from where? do? Is it all over uh, countries? I mean, cities? Where? I they come from all over the world. We have four coming from Canada. We have one coming from Wales. We have one coming from UK. Um, Germany is here, a couple of teams from Germany. And then, of course, almost every state in the union in here. It's the largest police action that doesn't arrest somebody. And this is officers, deputies, sheriffs, right? Yeah, it's also anybody that's in the law enforcement. So it could be judges, justices, uh, whoever is involved in any kind of law enforcement. And what does this race represent? What are they doing this for? Well, most times it's just to honor the police department or the legal department of every year. Last year we honored our fallen officer and different teams will honor different things as they go through town. And this is a great way to stay in shape with the officers, right? Oh, you bet. Oh, well, they've got to be in shape. Some of them have to go up a big hill. So so for some of us that may not know, how does this work? How many miles do they have to go for them to pass the, the baton away? Uh, it depends on how high it is, whether it's coming up one of the big hills. It may be only 4.3, 4 but as we lose, leave per rump here, that one guy runs 10 miles. So it's a total of 120 miles from where they start to where they finish at the Hilton. Feel good. Yeah. I would have liked to run a little faster, Nick, but, you know, you can do the best you can. So. How many miles did you run? 5.3. And did you ever feel like giving up? No. And you're here from Pahrump, right? Yes. I'm, uh, I work for the Nye County Sheriff's Department. I'm a recruit in the academy, and I'm in my third month. And how many, how many times have you been doing this? This is my first time. Oh, first time. Yeah. But are you going to do it again? Oh, yes. I'm Nathan Hollenbeck for News 46. And we're going to have much more coming out right after the break here on News 46, so please keep it with us. News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Affiliated Physical Therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. And welcome back to News 46. Here's an update regarding Friday's story on the marijuana grow located at Princeton and David Street. On Friday, approximately 10.30, the Nye County Sheriff's deputies were traveling southbound on David Street while approaching Princeton when both deputies detected a strong odor of marijuana while passing in their patrol vehicles. Deputies stopped and exited their vehicles, and they began to track down the scent on foot. The scent led them to a residence, which had the front door wide open. As the deputies approached the open door, the odor of marijuana became increasingly stronger. It was at that time that the male suspect stepped out of the home, and deputies began questioning him. The male subsequently granted the deputies consent to enter the residence to further investigate. Within the residence, there were two dogs and a wife of the male subject. Upon entry of the residence, deputies found a large quantity of marijuana plants that were currently in the process of cultivation. Also found within the residence were large tubs full of processed and dried marijuana. During the course of the investigation, the male stated that he was the only one who smokes marijuana, adding that he also feeds it to his dogs all the time. Deputies seized approximately 40 pounds of marijuana within the residence. The male was transported to the Nye County Detention Center, where he is currently 
currently incarcerated for the following charges. Maintaining a residence to sell a controlled substance, conspiracy to violate the Uniform Controlled Substance Act, possession of a controlled substance, poisoning an animal. 51-year-old Alan Pacone, he is being held on $17,500 bail. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. High energy prices and an economy that have been slow to rebound are worsening Social Security's finances, in turn shortening the life of the trust funds that support programs by three years. Those trust funds will now run dry in 2033. Medicare's hospital insurance fund is projected to run out of money in 2024, which is unchanged from last year. More than 56 million retirees, disabled workers, spouses, and children receive Social Security. The average retirement benefit is $1,232 a month, and the average monthly benefit for disabled workers is $1,111. About 50 million people are covered by Medicare, which is a medical insurance program for older Americans. Obama's health care law is supposed to trim Medicare expenses by $500 billion, extending the life of the program. Social Security is financed by a 6.2% tax on the first $110,000, $100,000 in wages. It is both paid by employers and workers. The Medicare tax rate is 1.45% on all wages paid by both employees and workers. Eight lovely contestants competed for the senior crown at the Pahrump Nugget. I'm in shock. <laughs> I'm, I kept telling someone I have no talent and I'm a one-shot person. I'd already volunteered to work in the back room next year during the pageant. <laughs> And for your talent, you did Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. I, I don't say I danced, I say I wiggled to the music, and then I just sang. And I've never sung before in my life. Wow, what an accomplishment. What do you hope to do this year? Well, I'm 79, and I want to get out among people my age who are older seniors. And I want to inspire them because I had a horrific accident four years ago, and I can't talk about it, I cry, but I was expected to be crippled, and I was, it was very terrible, and I recovered, and I just was determined, and I want to, I'd like to have people who have some physical problems realize that they can overcome them to, to, a, some, to a great extent. That's one of my main things because I just worked so hard to, to get back to where I was. It's a miracle and an inspiration that you're standing here today then. It is, really. What, who would you like to thank? Everyone, but especially Terry Rogers, because she was very inspiring for me. And she just believed in me, and I didn't. <laughs> and she, she was just, she was a big point. She, she made a big difference. And uh, so. I love Pahrump. I came here not quite two years ago. And I lived in Southern California for 75 years. I went there when I was a child. And I had lots of acquaintances. But in Peru, within a year and a half, I have made more friends, close friends, than I've ever had in my life. It's just, it's a place to have friends. And I just love it. A rare daytime meteor was seen and heard streaking over northern Nevada and parts of California yesterday. Observers in the Reno Sparks area of Nevada reported seeing a fireball at about 8 a.m. accompanied or followed by a thunderous clap that experts said could have been a sonic boom from the meteor or the sound of it breaking up high over the earth. While, a mete while meteors visible at night typically range in size from a pebble to a grain of sand, a meteor large enough to be seen during daylight hours would presumably be as big as a baseball or softball. Sunday's unusual daytime shooting star came just after the pre-dawn peak of the Lyrid meteor shower, an annual display that occurs when the Earth passes through remnants of space debris left by a comet that last approached the planet in 1861 on its 400-year orbit of the sun. A ribbon cutting was held for a bookstore and gallery on East Street. Thank you guys all for coming out. We're here at the Prump Art Gallery and the Chapter 2 Bookstore, one of our newest members up in the Prump Valley Chamber of Commerce. We're glad to have them. Um, we're going to do their official grand opening ribbon cutting here. We got uh, Susan and Jean at this time if you'd like to cut the ribbon. I mean, it's for the Chapter 2 Bookstore and the Prump Art Galleries. We've um, combined uh, groupings, I guess you could say, um, to make this a, a good place to come and buy used books that we have um, been donated to the library. Um, and then the artists get to display their art on a monthly basis. There'll be different rotations of artists, so it's a good place to come out and pick up some beautiful artwork and to get some books. And our books run from 25 cents to $2. And you decided to join the Prompt Valley Chamber of Commerce and have this grand opening. We're right next door to the library here. 
Correct. Um, this building um, is right next door to the library, like you just said. Um, a board member had purchased this building for us for the use of the library and whoever um, wanted to do it, so I teamed up with the Art Council and it's a good situation for both of us. The library gets some extra revenue and the artists get to display their art. If people want to make donations, can they make donations here? Um, yes, either here, because um, our hours are now going to be Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4, or at the library. We'll have more local news after this break. Stay with us. News 46 is brought to you by... Affiliated chiropractic and affiliated physical therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Good evening, Prump. I'm back. And guess what? I'm back with your weekend sports. For this week's update, I'm going to start off with some stats of an intense game. The Lakers and the Thunder. Need I say more? This game had some blood sweat, and some eagerness. Yeah, everything after halftime was colored by the drama and violence that occurred a minute and 37 seconds before the break. Meta World Peace was subdued and contrite in the Los Angeles Lakers locker room apologizing to Oklahoma City's James Harden for throwing the elbow that sent them both to the locker room in the second quarter. World Peace had just dunked over Durant and Serge Ibaka on a fast break and was headed back up court when he ran into Harden. While pounding his chest with his right arm, World Peace raised his left elbow over Harden's shoulder and cleanly hit Harden in the back of the skull. Harden dropped to the court and stayed down for about a minute before heading to the locker room. Abaka and other Thunder players challenged World Peace, but were kept apart. And World Peace was ejected after officials reviewed the tape. The Thunder didn't immediately announce whether Harden, who scored 14 points, had a concussion. Bryant and the other Lakers acknowledged World Peace is likely to face a multi-game suspension with just one game left in their regular season. They both missed the beauty of a game that could echo into the postseason for two division leaders. Well, simply because this game went into not a final, not a single overtime, but a double overtime to finally see who really was going to take this W home. Kobe Bryant sc scored six of his 26 points in the second overtime alongside an unorthodox Lakers lineup, and Los Angeles rallied from an 18-point deficit in the second half for a 114-106 to victory over the Thunder on Sunday. Paul Gasol had 20 points, 14 rebounds, and nine assists for the Lakers, who made an impressive comeback in the regular season home finale against off-target Thunder stars Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, who combined, who combined to miss 42 of their 56 shots. Los Angeles rally stunned the Thunder and set an early tone for their possible second-round playoff matchup. And, well, that's going to do it. Until next time, I'm Nathan Hollenbeck with your weekend sports. And, Pahrump, remember, watching sports doesn't mean you're getting exercise. Good night, Pahrump. Saturday marked a special day for one of our own. All of us here at KPBM want to wish a happy birthday to our own Zach Fuentes. And happy, happy, happy birthday to our weatherman, Zach. Really appreciate you. You're an easygoing guy and you're very talented. Thank you, Zach, and happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. You think I'm really going to sing you a happy birthday song, Zach? Nice try. All right. Happy birthday, bro. It's always great working with you. Happy birthday to Zach Fuentes, who is my teammate and wonderful, wonderful worker. Hey, Zach, happy birthday, man. Many more to you, and uh, just keep up the great work. Happy birthday, Zach. Wow. I want to say you're getting old, but I can't say you're getting old yet. So, happy birthday. Hi, Zach. Happy birthday. You know we all love you up here. Couldn't work without you. Anyway, here's to getting older, buddy. Well, you know, I'm back again, and we got to celebrate birthdays around here, anniversaries, all these other things, you know. So it seems like it's a birthday every week. Uh, I can never lose weight because we got to buy all these cakes. we got to buy all this icing and chocolate and 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, here we go again. It's another birthday. It's Zach's birthday. I think he's 20 years old. The kid's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal kid at 20 years old. The kids coming out today are so much brighter. Great individual. Really appreciate this young man. Happy birthday, Zach. And uh, what's up with the heat, man? Turn the heat down, weatherman. Zach, it sucks that you're no longer a teenager. You still look like a little kid, but you're a grown man now. Happy birthday. You're such a good friend and a co-worker. Happy birthday, Zachy Galifianaki. wonder what it feels like to be no longer a teenager because you're so freakishly old. I love you, you poo. Feliz cumpleaños, mi amigo. Happy, very, very happy birthday to you, Zach. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Chad. How are you doing? Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been like a four-day birthday because we celebrated Friday here, too, but we just put this on today. So, and thank you. And happy birthday from me. Thank you so much, Monique. It's been really great. And Vern, I'm sorry about that heat, but things are going to cool off a little bit. Is that good? That's really yeah, good. Yeah, is that good? Yeah. Things are going to cool off a little bit for us. We might get back into the 80s, but we'll have more of that after the break when I come back with your weather. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. And welcome back, everyone. Today, we had some few high clouds out there, and our high was 95 degrees. Winds weren't too bad. They were coming out of the south at 7, and our gusts at 19. Pressure at 29.92, and our UV index was at 9, very high. Humidity was not very high at all, only at 10%, and our sunrise was at 6 a.m. sharp. Today, our record was 98 degrees back in 1949, and we came very close to that. We even had some record-breaking temperatures this weekend. Tonight, though, we're going to look at mostly clear skies. Our low is going to be 62, so our nights have actually been pretty pleasant. Not too cold, not too warm either. Wind's coming out of the south-southwest at 6 and our gusts at 16. Humidity is going to go up to 27% and sunset is going to be at 7.25 p.m. Our record for tonight, we did not come close to 36 degrees back in 1937. Tomorrow, we're going to have partly cloudy skies and that cold front is starting to come in, although Cold front for us is good because we're not going to be in the high 90s anymore. Our high tomorrow is going to be 88 degrees and our low 62. Winds coming out of the south at 8 and our gusts at 14. So still kind of breezy, but not too bad, especially with that cooler temperature in there. UV index is going to stay the same at 9, very high. And our sunrise is getting earlier at 5.59 a.m. Humidity at 22%. And now taking a look at the seven-day forecast. We're going to have clouds tomorrow. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we have some pretty reasonably high chances of rain. 20% Wednesday, 30% on Thursday. Friday, we're going to have a little bit of clouds still. But Saturday, Sunday, our weekend is looking very nice. The temperatures as well, 80 and 83 for Saturday and Sunday. And Monday as well is looking nice. We're starting to warm up a little bit there. You can see the trend warming up there, 85 on Monday. Our lowest low is going to be on Wednesday, 55 degrees. So we're getting out of those 90s a little bit and even seeing some chances of rain. Oh, I know. My hair is not going to like the moisture at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a problem for girls, I guess, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Okay. The Chocolate Affair event will be held Saturday, April 28th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Pahrump Valley United Methodist Church located at 1300 Highway 372. The cost is $8 in advance, $10 at the door. Children 12 and under half price. All proceeds will benefit our local homeless veterans in Pahrump. For more information, call 209-3645 or 727-8606. And examinations for amateur radio licenses will be held on Saturday, May 12, 2012 at noon at Nye County Emergency Services. For more information, call Dick Grady at 751-5242. The Detention Center will be hosting a barbecue on Tuesday, tomorrow morning at Nevada Southern Detention Center at 2190 East Mesquite, Pahrump, from, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. To donate, please call 751-4500, extension 14506. 
And don't forget the buy one, get one deal from Domino's Pizza. It's every Monday to Wednesday. And be sure to mention KPVM to get the special. Call 751-3030. And that is going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Zach Fuentes. And I'm Monique Murphy. From everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening. We'll see you here again tomorrow night. Till then, good night, Pahrump. Good night.